Hey everybody, it's uh, Dr. Miller again, and just like I made a video for supplemental information in Microsoft Word, I am making a supplemental video for Microsoft Excel, and I will do further ones in the future. This is just a bit easier to teach you some of the specific things you need rather than have you do an entire additional tutorial. Um, and also it's fun. I like being able to teach you things and show you things. So one of the things you may not notice when you first open an Excel file is that Excel has more pages in it than the screen you see. So yes, we can scroll way, way, way down and see all kinds of data. And you can kind of just scroll for as many like letters as you can imagine. And some people get in some really gnarly Excel spreadsheets, but um, you can also use templates and then have Excel sheet number two, Excel sheet number three, and Excel sheet four. And you can name all of those and you can call them and that they are, they com together they compose a workbook. So you have um, let's say Library Company of Philadelphia records. And then let's say I wanted to have um, New York Society Library records. And then let's say I wanted to have Loganian, oops, sorry. Library records. And then Let's say I'll put UWG. Um, so what you would then be able to do, so this is a series of historical library records from the late 18th and, did I get past 1800? No, I went to 1798 um, through the late 18th century. Um, so these were uh, borrowing records from library patrons, you know, relatively normal people who aren't probably mostly famous, like, you know, these are, and some of them, you, it, their names are kind of hard to, to read anyway. Um, so these were people who would pay a fee to take out a book from a library where they weren't officially a member, and uh, they would put a little deposit down just in case they ran off with the book. Um, if, you know, if anyone has told you stories about Blockbuster Video back in the day, you would give them a card and they would charge your card if you didn't return the video. Um, similarly, uh, you know, these people would have their down payment kept if they defaulted on their library books, but most of them did not because we also have records of that. Um, so I am studying these because I think it's very interesting to learn what uh, less elite people read. Um, I mean, obviously, if you could afford to read a book and you had literacy, you know, you weren't poor. Uh, so it's something we could take with a grain of salt. But at the same time, um, you know, these aren't people who are famous in general or people who've been studied much in general. And I like learning what they've read in particular, you know, kind of thinking about what average people um, knew in a culture. So that's what I'm studying here at different uh, libraries. And of course, here's one at the Library Company of Philadelphia, where you can go today. It was founded by Benjamin Franklin. Uh, the New York Society Library is also one where uh, you can go today. Uh, the Loganian Library closed and was folded into the Library Company of Philadelphia. And of course, all of you have been to the UWG Library. So that's why I might use this uh, version of Excel. It's a great way to sort and organize and keep information. You'll note that there's a fee for note. There's a field for notes, uh, how much fee they paid for these books, what their collateral was, uh, the price of the book that was listed, uh, whether there's marginalia, meaning like whether someone wrote in it, um, you know, whether it was returned or not. And see, they were returned. Um, gender, occupation, um, we can add fields for race once we get into more diverse uh, 
library ships or maybe national origin would be a good idea as well um and then you know when were people reading and what were they reading i find it fascinating you know people love to read travel books they love to read history all that kind of stuff okay so that's how i am using excel for a pro project that interests me how might someone else use excel uh, let's say you run a um an office you know, you might have a job, let's say, working for a publisher, um, but you're also doing some office management work. Um, you could have uh, timekeeping records for full-time employees, part-time employees, contract employees, and then you could have records for your vendors um, for some particular project. Um, then each separate tab would get... Um, you know, a series of data, and you can do a whole new set of fields in each of those tabs. Or you can copy and paste the way you would do, um, you know, select all, copy, paste, etc. Um, and as you want to add more sheets, you can just add sheet after sheet. Uh, you could have something where it's like books, books published in 2012, 13, 2014, 2015, 2016, you know, and you keep your publication dates and your book list in those spreadsheets. Uh, you could have sales figures that you keep. Um, you know, you can keep track of prices across time, look and see how much prices are inflated over time, and then see what kinds of changes you want to make or you need to make. For example, let's say, I mean, people still publish magazines. Um, let's say you worked for a publication that charged per issue, um, but the printer prices were going up so astronomically that you needed to adjust. Um, if you had a boss who's like, I don't know, I don't think we can adjust that, and you roll up with your spreadsheets that show the different costs of all the different things over time, and then you factor in inflation, they're going to look at you and go, well, now, I think we know who's smart. That's you. Uh, so these are some reasons why people might want to use Excel spreadsheets. It's very useful. Um, if you are applying to graduate schools, um, you know, you could have, you know, a spreadsheet for applications and, or a tab, a tab for applications and then another tab for, um, you know, the offers that you get when they come in and what kind of funding there is available to you. Um, and then, you know, that way you can kind of go back and forth. Um, you can apply for some and then you can add your um, funding offers and others and then have like maybe the rejections in a third one, you know, that you can just delete that tab after, you, after you're done with everything so you don't get set. But it's good to keep track just so you know who you've heard from. Anyway, I hope that that gives you some examples of how someone in an English department or with a humanities background might use Excel workbooks with multiple tabs and multiple sheets in them. Thanks a lot, and I'll check in with you later. Bye.